Everyone can show kindness and everyone has a gift to do different things and mine is my music and my violin. The biggest blessing in doing music and doing Christian music is being able to touch people's lives. After I started touring with the Mennonite Children's Choir and we got to go to Israel, travel the world, and I knew this is what I wanted to do for a living. She likes to go barefoot, wear a blink, singing on the tractor, well that's her thing. We use our gifts to bless others, and I feel so grateful to God for allowing me to do what I do so that I can touch other people's lives. Hi, my name is Rosemary Siemens, and I'm on my parents' century farm outside of Plum Coulee, Manitoba, Canada. I feel so blessed to still be in the house that I was born in. My parents have lived here their entire lives. My dad, 84 years old, still farms full time. He still water skis. He is like unbelievable. And my mom, a music teacher, she taught me everything I know in music. She is incredible and invested so much time so that I can do what I love today. I feel so blessed to have such incredible parents and an amazing brother, my brother Jonathan. He actually farms with my dad and it's so special to have this farm in our family. It's been in our family since 1898. It's a century farm. And I feel so grateful for being brought up on the farm. I actually live in Vancouver with my family now, with my husband Eli and my sons Theodore and Amadeus. But we're spending the summer in Manitoba, so we're just so blessed to be here right now. My mom was a music teacher and so she saw early on that I had a love for music. She said since I was a baby I was matching pitch. I would play along on my violin and my piano and I would sing along. You know when I was growing up I didn't always want to practice and my mom says do it, do the piano, do violin, do voice. And I'm so glad she was persistent and she kept me on that path. That has now turned into my musical ministry. As I got a bit older, I started touring with the Mennonite Children's Choir and we got to go to Israel, we got to go to Europe, we traveled the world and I knew this is what I wanted to do for a living. You know, I did my undergrad in music at the University of British Columbia and then I did a master's at the University of Miami in Florida. I just fell in love with music. I've had so many incredible experiences on this journey. Some of my favorite being playing Carnegie Hall. I got to play Carnegie Hall in New York City four times. I got to play the legendary Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee. I feel so honored to have been the first instrumentalist in the world to play at the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican, as well as St. Peter's Basilica. What an absolute honor. It was actually with a tour, a friend of mine named Candice Wiki, she took me on a tour with her choir and she asked me to be the soloist. And it was such an honor. And actually the piece that I got to play at the Sistine Chapel was amazing great. And the acoustics in that church, about nine seconds of reverberation, it was unbelievable. And then having the most beautiful art to look up to, it was just incredible. So I feel so blessed that God has put me on this journey, shared the gift of music with so many people all around the world. I was in Rome at the Vatican. We were playing concerts and I was on my way to a concert. My parents were with me and we actually wanted to stop at the Colosseum on the way. We decided to stop. I love playing in unusual places. We're at a beautiful location. So my dad starts taking video of me and I'm playing holy, holy, holy. I am literally playing my last note and I open my eyes. I see three Italian policemen coming at me. I did not know what to do. And they said, you're not allowed to play here. You're not allowed to play here. And I'm like, I didn't know, I didn't know. And so they brought us to the office and they said, delete the video. Basically, they kicked me, my mom, my dad, out of the Colosseum for playing a hymn, but we did get that video and the most beautiful thing happened. But as I'm playing, there's a man standing next to me and he's just wiping away the tears the entire time. He's just completely engrossed in the music and he was so touched by it. 
I've had an interesting path in my music. I actually started playing with the Canadian tenors, a group that traveled around the world. I played with a group called Destino, which is pop and opera. I had a classical duo, Diva Musica. I had a duo with my friend Lauren Hebert at the piano where we played hymns. I have a duo with my husband called Sax and Violin where we played love songs and pop music. I actually have another duo with a pianist named Roy where we do cinematic and movie music. People have really told me how much they enjoy sharing the journey with me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes. I have a YouTube show called Sunday Hymn Serenade, where it is my mission to bring back the hymns. I started posting a hymn to YouTube every Sunday morning, and people started tuning in. We now have almost 200,000 subscribers and over 33 million views from around the world. You know, these hymns were written by people who were going through trials and tribulations, and how God saw them through these tribulations. And they wrote these hymns like, It is well with my soul. The man that wrote this, his family died in a shipwreck. And he went back to that spot where those children died, and he wrote, it is well with my soul. Only God could give those profound lyrics in a time of such devastation. With my soul. A few years ago, I was playing a concert for the Museum of Contemporary Art in Santa Barbara. I was leaving the gig. I had to go to a very early morning flight to South Dakota. I had some of my gear in my hand and my friend was holding my violin. I was leaving the room, hotel room, and I said, hey, you have my violin? And he said, no, I left it outside the door. I was gonna help you with your luggage. I said, no. <laughs> I ran to look, no violin. My violin is from 1714. It was made in Paris. It played in King Louis XIV's orchestra, and I've nicknamed it Sparkle. So this violin is a piece of me. When this went missing, I was beside myself, as you can imagine. I didn't know what to do, so I called my husband. He's a world-renowned saxophone player and his sax had once been stolen from the back of a church. So I says, what do I do, Eli? I called the cops, we went door to door. We looked through dumpsters. We went through bushes. We went to gas stations. We went to liquor stores. No violin. Out of nowhere, a black SUV shows up. The guy rolls down the window. He says, hey, are you the ones looking for the violin? I said, yeah, do you have it? He says, no, but I heard about it at the gas station. He says, I have musicians in my family. I can only imagine what you're going through. So here we are, 4 a.m., sitting in this hotel parking lot with my friends and this stranger praying about the return of my violin sparkle. This man, he says, he says, I work in the prison ministries in Santa Barbara, and I'm going to personally give a $2,000 cash reward for your violin. Well, this gave me enough faith to get on that airplane. And my first stop was Seattle. I was walking through that airport. I was just about to get on my next flight and I was just in tears. And out of nowhere, my phone rings and I see it's the hotel manager. I answer, she's crying. She said, a man in a black hoodie, disheveled looking, came through the front doors of the hotel, went to the front desk, placed your violin down and said, I hear you've been looking for this and walked out the front door. Now, if that's not a miracle, I don't know what is. And I'll tell you, I went to that show in South Dakota and I told everyone about you know, this is how I got my violin. And, and a stranger messaged me after that. He says, I want to pay for your flight to Santa Barbara to go pick up your violin. So the whole story was miraculous. But now I see t'was grace. In times of distress like this, you never know why God is doing things. But I realize now, looking back, that God used that moment so that I could have a personal testimony. But now I can share in a concert hall, I can share it in a church, I can share it if I'm playing in a bar, I can share it anywhere. And no one can deny that that happened. That grace appeared. But I have to say one of my absolute favorite hymns in the world is How Great Thou Art. I recently did a concert in my home community and we had a packed house and I ended the show with How Great Thou Art. That audience, we had about 500 people there and everyone's singing in harmony. Anytime anyone sings those lyrics, they feel closer to God. A 
few years back, I was living in Vancouver and my cousin had a very, very horrible accident. He was walking across one of the busiest streets in Vancouver and he got hit by a vehicle. So I got the call from the hospital to come immediately. And I saw my cousin and it did not look good. All signs showed that it would not end well. But I called my family in Manitoba there and we started a prayer chain. And I'll tell you, miracles started to happen. He slowly got better and better. And you know, he was a psychiatrist actually in the hospital where he ended up with this accident. And it was just months later that he was again a psychiatrist at that hospital. And in the midst of caring for him, I was writing a song with a friend named Troy Sampson. And he says, why don't we write a song about faith and having faith? So that's where this song came from. You know, in that dark, dark moment where you think this person is not going to pull through, you know, God is the one that decides that. Just have a little faith. Take a little time. I was touring in Hannibal, Missouri, and a woman came up to me after the concert. She says, my sister, her husband had committed suicide. She was addicted to opioids, and she heard your song, and she said it saved her life. So she says, I came here tonight to let you know that your song, Have a Little Faith, saved my sister's life. Hope is gone, just let your light shine bright. Let it go, let it go. And the process, you know, what we do is first I play the piano. I make my own arrangement of the hymn on piano. Then I take my violin and I listen to the piano and then I layer all the strings one by one. I'll play like a bunch of first violins, a bunch of second violins, a bunch of violas. We'll put in the cello with MIDI. And then I sing my lyrics after that. My husband Eli records the entire process. So I don't know if there's one thing that I like the best. I really enjoy the entire process. I am so excited to be in my hometown of Plum Coulee, Manitoba, Canada. And I am so beyond honored that they put up a sign in my honor. It was a very special weekend during Plum Fest. I released my album called Plum Coulee, My Home, my bluegrass album, and they honored me with a sign. And it was such a special day, and I just feel so honored. When she was 17, she packed a bag and left that little town to find her dream. She saw the million lights, she didn't feel alone, she welcomed in a And the single from that album is actually called Barefoot and Bling. I had my pianist here, Roy, and one day we were going to show, and I was barefoot, I was in a sequined, sparkly gown, and I was driving my pickup truck, and he says, now it all makes sense, Rosemary. I says, what? He said, you are the dichotomy of these two worlds. You are the farm girl, but you are the girl in the sparkly dress. So that is where my single name came from. It's called Barefoot and Bling. She likes to go barefoot, wear bling, sing it on the tractor. Well, that's her thing. Walking in the red coffee, still a little green. She's a prairie farm girl and a city queen. In 2016, I was doing a concert at Bueller Hall in Gretna. And I look to the back of the hall, I see Eli there. And he's supposed to be on tour with his other band in a different city. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And he's in a white suit, holding his saxophone, and he starts to play Can't Help Falling In Love. And I'm like, what is happening? He comes down the aisle, he gets on stage. He had the ring in the saxophone bell. He takes the ring out, he gets down on one knee, and he proposes. Will you marry me? And I was so shocked, you cannot even imagine. So we had a public wedding in the town square of Plum Coulee. That's the same place that I had my CD release. How do you feel, Eli, your last moments as awesome. a single man? <laughs> I'm ready. You know, they were musicians from around the world, and I thought, we can't have all these amazing musicians here and not feature them. So the day before the wedding, we actually had a concert with Rosemary and Eli and friends, and it was so amazing. The wedding was just, it was perfect. I now pronounce you husband and wife, but God has joined together that no man separate. You may kiss your bride. It was so good, and then we actually had a big hymn sing. We had all the musicians come on stage, 
and we sang hymns together. It was so special and actually Eli and I emceed our own wedding. Eli played that same song, Can't Help Falling in Love. He played that as I came down the aisle and it was so special. And we actually did musical vows as well. So I feel so blessed to have such an amazing husband, such a talented husband, and one that I can share, we can share our faith together, and we can share our music together. You know, my son Theodore, he's only three years old, but he's with us in the recording studio, and he is singing the hymns. He's singing a hymn solo in all of our concerts, and he loves the hymns, so I know that they will be here to stay, even if it's him that passes this on to the next generation. Often I come in restaurants like this. One time I went into a Cracker Barrel in, uh, in the States and I went and I saw a man, you know, he was wearing a veteran hat and he looked really kind of sad and lonely and I thought, you know, should I go play something for him? And I felt it on my heart and I was about to leave the restaurant. So I went back and I said, could I play a song for you? I, he said, absolutely. I said, are you a veteran? He says, I am. There I got my violin out and I played America the Beautiful for this veteran and he was brought to tears. And it's moments like that that I feel so grateful to be able to play music and touch people's lives. This is actually the church that I grew up in. I remember just being at the front of the church and this is the first place that I really got to perform. My mom would be at the piano and my dad would be leading. So everything really started with my family and in church. I have always felt God's blessing on my life. He always opens doors when those doors need to be opened. And it's moments like that where I just feel that God has blessed me. God has kind of always led the path of what kind of music I should be doing and putting the right people in my path so that I know what music I should be playing next and what concerts to be doing next. In my spare time, what we love to do when we're on the farm is we love to sing together as a family. Our son Theodore now sings with us as well. It was so special. We just had a concert here, a packed concert called From Plum Coulee to Carnegie. And I shared the stage with some of my most favorite people and it was so special. I love being home, just sitting in the living room and just practicing. You know, often you prepare for a concert and you don't realize until later the most special moments are actually when you're rehearsing and just getting together and just sharing music together. It's One of the most touching hymns is I Surrender All. It was written in 1896. All to Jesus I surrender All to Him is so beautiful and when I come home to the farm I love to film in beautiful locations around the farm and we got to film this one in my dad's wheat field during golden hour as the sun was setting. I The most important thing in whatever people do is that we use our gifts to bless others. And I feel so grateful to God for allowing me to do what I do so that I can touch other people's lives. So I have some very exciting plans coming up. Some of them being a tour to the East Coast, which we're really excited about, going with my family, doing all the music for the National Conservative Convention, doing 100 Huntley, which is a Christian TV program. We're gonna be doing that with my entire family's editing. And then we have some shows lined up in the fall on the West Coast as well, as well as in Manitoba. Nearer to thee. 
Thank you to God for putting me on this path that I can now help others. And who knows how God is going to use this channel. I can only imagine there's going to be many more stories like this. And I can't wait to see what God shows me in the years to come. Are you searching for purpose of life? <laughs> Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.